Hey everyone, it's Lucid, and we are going to be doing a tier list for expanding monsters. Uh, some of this is because I just did a video on how monster expanders work. They're a pretty fun, I think, and good god option for anybody, but especially for new players who might struggle with expansion otherwise. And they're just fun. They're fun to play with. So if you're playing single player, it might be the most fun way to play single player. Yeah. But uh, I wanted to go ahead and rank them. And I don't think there's a corresponding video to be done with like immobiles or with titans or rainbows, which are the other classes of uh, pretenders. The rainbows, we'll go ahead and pull up Dominion 6 here. I'll just talk about a little bit what each of them are. You probably should know, but just to have a visual aid. So rainbows are down here. They generally have like low magic path cost. The monsters are mostly in the Dominion 2 range, but occasionally there's the Titan mixed in and the, well, sort of rainbow. <laughs> and then there's the Dominion 3 dudes. These are normally Titans. And then there's the Immobiles. These are normally some of your best incarnate bless carriers in terms of like bang for the buck. Titans are army destroyers in the mid and late game. But uh, yeah. So anyway, that there are all the categories. The reason it doesn't really make sense, I don't think, to do a tier list for the other categories is mostly like the differences between the rainbows is insignificant. It's mostly like, which path do you need? There's cool things added for flavor, and I'm totally glad that the flavor's in there. But, it, you know, it just isn't that big of a deal. <laughs> it wouldn't make sense to do a tier list. You know, for the Titans, you could kind of do it. But a lot of the Titans, again, are mostly the same with some stuff added in for flavor. And basically, it's the same thing with these. I mean, you know, like the monolith is cool. You know, it has way more hit points than like a blood fountain. We could talk about that. But really, it's like, what bless do you want? The monsters, however, are different. The monsters are different because they do not all expand the same or about the same. They don't scale necessarily equally as well. They're pretty different. So what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be talking about the monsters. And the, the ranking I've come up with is at the top, S tier, is it can expand pretty well, right? Like you can potentially take out hard provinces with it. And it's also going to become, it has the ability to outlive kind of like the early game usefulness where it's like a, you know, just a kind of trash army killer, right? It could become a true super combatant where it might be able to kill player armies. Um, especially if it can do it in the magic phase. So that's like really what an S tier is. These are the ones that, you know, they can pay off in multiple phases of the game. They're really good. They're going to be like tempo, but then also they're not going to lose usefulness because most of these monsters versus the AI, they're going to be fine for the pretty much the whole game. But in a multiplayer game with uh, humans, uh, humans are normally pretty good at killing them. Oh, one thing I should mention is that going back to the game, Almost all of the pretenders, the monsters, got buffed in Dominion 6 in the sense that they now have a magical attack. So that's a pretty important change. One of the ways you would kill them was like, you know, if they only had mundane attacks and you couldn't put new weapons on them, well, you were going to have a bad time of it trying to kill the, or, you know, if you were the monster trying to hold off some thug with like mist form and body ethereal. So... Um, yeah, so they were reasonably easy to kill. They're a little less hard to kill now, but still, they're not going to be any match for the versatility and power of something like a Titan in the mid game. However, unlike a Titan, they can expand, right? So they're really good at killing Indies when you first start out. That's kind of their main job. Yeah. Mindless, A tier, is they're so good at that job that you can almost blind expand with them turn one. Or because not everything in the mindless category is going to fit that. Or these are going to be ones that you really don't have to put too much thought into. You can kind of just click them into provinces and they'll take them, especially once like they get uh, a level two type of thing, right? So they can expand to like at least medium provinces uh, right out of the, like out of the gate. But then once you get like enchantment two or alteration two, then they can definitely go take hard provinces. By hard provinces, I mean like 80 barbs or something, right? Things you really don't want to send your army into. Um, a lot of these two are also going to be very cheap in terms of like they don't require like a big bless. 
you can just take them with minimal points spent on their magic or their bless or whatever, and they're going to be fine. B is these guys can work well. Like they can expand pretty well. They can kind of do their job. They're not mindless. You know, they might work against certain types of provinces much better than others. Like a lot of the ones in this tier, you won't be able to send after like barbarians or, you know, some of them you will. And then C is requires a bless. So this is like, you can't really expand with them out of the box. Or if you could, it would be only like the easiest provinces. You basically have to spend points to get a very significant bless on them, and then they can only expand within their dominion. Now, other ones you may choose to. Like, you could get some of these really, you know, the stronger expanders and get a really strong bless on them. But these chassis down here in the C tier require a bless. But there is a bless that if you get it on them, they will be able to expand. Now, sometimes it's going to be really expensive, like ethereal, right? But in general, I'm going to evaluate this based on on-path blesses. So it's like, you know, if you took the Dracolich or something, and you were like, oh, it needs an ethereal bless to expand, but it doesn't come with astral. That We're not going to count it as that. Now, the Dracolich can expand fine without it, but you get what I'm saying. So basically, is there an on-path bless that would allow this pretender to expand when it otherwise wouldn't? It's going to be C tier. D tier is like almost hopeless. It means there's no on path bless that's going to allow it to expand. Also, it's going to mean there's going to be some things that could expand after you had like alteration to research, but they would, you know, like if they get missed form or something. But that could be like three or four turns, maybe five turns into the game. Those are really critical turns with an expander. And not being able to expand until you have that research is really tough. In fact, it could be even more like like even six turns depending if you get like um you know no magic in that pat like when you based on how many magic scales you have it'll determine how much starting research you have and if you roll like none in the the particular school you wanted it could be you know a pretty long time one thing i'll just push for here or suggest that i think this would make the game a lot better is if the starting research you got if you could allocate it however you wanted at the start of the game the easiest way would be if there's just like, instead of it automatically allocating, you get like wisps or something at the start that would like research for one turn and then disappear. But that would allow you to like, maybe if you get enough magic, you could start off with alteration two, and then you'd be able to like expand with a bunch of these pretenders that really are not viable right now without it. So, I, and it would also open up other like mage based expansion things, which I think would just be a ton of fun. The the community, like players, especially sweaty tryhards, would just love that. Anyway, those, those are kind of the tiers. Yeah, and and so based on there's going to be some kind of weird things where like maybe there's a pretender in the C tier that's worse than a pretender in the D tier because it's like, I'm assuming you're going to get an ethereal blast, but if you don't, anyway, this is just how we're going to rank them. What are the caveats here? The caveats are... I don't use these a ton. I'm not like a big monster user. I do use them some, but I think they weren't really meta in Dominions 5. I think they have a better chance to be meta in Dominion 6, you know, because expansion's a little harder with more indies. Um, but also they got buffed. You know, magic weapons is a kind of big deal. What's the other... Oh, the other disclaimers, these are like my opinions. I, I don't think they're like fact by any means. So yeah, let's get going. So this one, the Ageless Alm, this one's kind of interesting. We'll go ahead and we're going to switch back and forth between the Mod Inspector. Oh, it's not letting me click it. Okay, uh, I can't get Mod Inspector to work, so we're going to be switching back and forth uh, from here in the game, which is kind of better. Uh, this is better looking than Mod Inspector, especially if you're in a dark room right now and you don't want that white light blowing up your eyeballs. Okay, so this one. What's cool about it, it's got two life drain attacks and two arm slots. You could argue it's a titan, but it doesn't have a chest and a helmet slot. So it's actually, it also doesn't have like good protection, like like high natural protection, which is a common thing of monsters. So this is kind of, this is kind of a pretender that has a foot in each door. Um, sadly, it's, I don't know. <laughs> I don't think it's that good, right? It's got cold-blooded, which it's got cold resistance, so it's going to be at least partially mitigated here in, in Dominion 6. So that's nice for it. The, the, the true life drain attack, or it's not true, but it's a 20 damage life drain attack. That's pretty strong, right? It's going to be healing a lot. 
and it's got a bonus five attack to compensate for its horrible eight attack score. The problem is this guy doesn't have a ton of survivability and he doesn't really have a way to like make the enemy go away other than just punching him in the face repeatedly. <laughs> so with life drain, but it's only 13 attack. So you're like, how would you make this work? You basically, I think, have to have Quicken Self. And if you have that, you're Alt 2, at which point you get Stone Skin, which would jump you up to 15 protection. So then the question is, could you wait till Alt 2 and do it? Eh. I don't really think you're going to be successful there. <laughs> so, you know, how would we rank this guy? Well, he can't expand very well. Even with the Bless, like, Hard Skin, he's going to fail expansion. You basically have to wait till you have Alt 2 for Quickness and Stone Skin. Once he gets Iron Skin, he could probably expand. But, you know, that's pretty far. Like, that's pretty late. <laughs> it's This guy, he's going to struggle really hard. It's cool. It, you know, it's a cool chassis once, you know, you get some research. But, you know, if you need these, it's also not expensive. It's It's a very cheap chassis. So it has things going for it. I could see you getting it, but you wouldn't really get it as an expander, and it's kind of shittier than a lot of other titans, especially since it can't magic phase. But if you wanted, like, earth and water things, and you wanted to have, you know, a god who could punch stuff, like, maybe take thrones. Like, you could have this guy dormant and maybe take thrones. Maybe it could work, but we're not going to be able to talk about each of these too much. He's going to go D tier. Oh, the other thing I should mention, the better, the closer to the start, the better. But we're going to rank them within the tier... And left is stronger and right is weaker. So, anyway. Next up, we have the Ancient Kraken. And I'm just going to put him up here. He's one of my favorites. He got severely nerfed in Dominion 6. Not severely, significantly nerfed. And that is because he got this trait called Clumsy. And he only gains half the normal attack and defense bonuses from weapons and shields. Which makes sense. The thing you used to do is put on four main gosh as a pairing, and that gives you a bonus, like 24 defense. <laughs> That's really sick. So now instead of 24, it's only going to be 12, which actually is not much. And those are the best ways to defense tank, right? So yeah, he's he's not going to get a ton of defense, sadly. Um, you know, best case, you could get 12, which is going to put you up at 20 protect, uh, defense, you know, which is fine. Um, yeah, so, uh, but still, he's amazing. He's one of my favorite pretenders. Now, I'm, I'm going to put him in S tier. Um, he's maybe the best monster in the game for, not for expanding, but just as a total package, okay? This guy, if you don't, he's actually in some ways a C tier, or not C tier, a D tier. He kind of needs a bless to expand. You cannot, you cannot use this guy solo to expand without hard skin. Um, you know, you could wait until you have stone skin at alt 2 and then go. Um, you can also use him, you know, to, to help your starting army because he's very killy, so he works in pretty well with an army and he has fear. And he has a ton of hit points. However, he... <laughs> you know, it's kind of weird that I'm putting S tier because he really isn't great as an expander. But if you take hard skin, which... I think you kind of just want to take, I don't know. You, if you take hard skin and then you can take some other bless on him, uh, he can expand fine, right? He's got a huge hit point pool. He has, he, there's so many good tags on him. He's got fear. He's got stealth. This is amazing. This is one of the reasons a lot of monsters fall off in the mid game too, is there anytime they go somewhere, they're like open to magic phase attacks and this guy can sneak away. It's a really big deal. With Titans, you can put Shade Mail or something on them. Or at least your opponent might think you could put Shade Mail on them. He also comes with Recuperation, and this is huge. So, you know, as you're expanding, especially on this chassis, you're going to be taking a ton of damage and thereby Afflictions. So it's really nice to be able to get rid of Afflictions. What else? Scales, Walls. Oh, Ambidextrous 5 is cool. These are also really good paths. Earth and Astral are amazing. So, you know, Earth is just great as a super combatant path. So, like, once you get Alt-3, this guy can do Iron Skin, it can do Body Ethereal, it can do Temper Flesh, it can do Astral Shield, it can do, you know, Strength of Giants on itself, and then Punch really hard. It's just, it's pretty versatile. You know, MR, you know, it can actually, you can also throw up Meteor Storm, or Meteor Shower with it, like the Battlefield-wide thing. 
because with Temper Flesh, it takes a lot of hits to kill him. And then, of course, it has four arm slots, right? Which I'd mentioned the defense tanking thing, but you could put anything on here, right? He can be exceptionally killy. So it's just a, this guy's a menace. And then with high astral, you can hold up globals and things like that. So what am I saying here? I'm saying this has the potential to like carry the game for you in addition to helping out your early expansion. It's good at all phases in the game. It's a monster. But if you don't take hard skin, it struggles to expand. So this is where like personal preference is going to come in. And I'm already kind of like breaking my own rules by how I'm defining the categories because technically it kind of requires a bless to expand. You can take easy provinces without a bless, but if you take hard skin, it can expand with it with a bless, you know, starting at the beginning. But this guy has like huge payoffs later. It's a really, really cool chassis. So we're going to put him up here at S. Anyway, it's a kind of weird one. This is one of the weirdest monster pretenders there is, but it's it's super cool. Next up, we have a Z. And a Z is pretty cool. Let's see if we can find them. Okay, so a Z is actually super strong. It's a three-headed flying dragon. It's expensive. It's 260 so it's a bit more pricey than, you know, let's say your average... Oh, no, it's actually the same price as a dragon. Damn. Yeah, it does lose magic paths in its form. So if you pick him, it's a fire death mage. Uh, and I believe it has like a, a human form that it comes in. But the dragon form, it loses some magic paths. But, I mean, it's a monster. It's got uh, three bite attacks and a claw attack and then an area of effect, but defense negates tail sweep. So this guy can potentially kill four units and then potentially like another three with tail sweep. So seven units per round with attacking. That's pretty spooky. It's also got chaos power. So you could potentially be fighting like if things are pillaged in chaos five and you get 10 to all these stats. So it's like defense 19. Like that could be crazy. So yeah, this guy's nuts. Pretty high protection, a reasonable hit point pool, and then dragon fire. And dragon fire, there's a bunch of different flavors of it but this also is going to get boosted by chaos power. But all of them are pretty good, right? And this will just destroy independence. Uh, I mean, it'll really hurt player armies too. The special consideration for Dragonfire, I think, is if, you know, there's a bunch of different, there's like cold, there's lightning, there's an acid one, there's a like a plague one or a fear one. If your units are basically immune to that effect, and you can like put your guy behind them and just spew dragon fire over the back of your units. It's really, really strong. So the times especially to consider taking any of the dragon pretenders is if your own troops are immune to it and you can just shoot dragon breath over the back. Dragon breath has been buffed in six or changed. It's a side grade. It used to have a fixed ammo. Now it's a fatigue cost and it's going to cost your fatigue and your encumbrance to, to use it. But you can keep using it until you run over 50 fatigue. So if you put reinvigoration gear on them, you can potentially use it a lot. Um, so it's another way these chassis got buffed. It, these are also magic weapons now. And turning these things into magic weapons can be a pretty big difference. Like It makes them a lot better against elementals and other things they really struggled with. So yeah, extremely strong pretender. Yeah, this thing's a monster. It's a true monster. There's not a lot of nations that have access to it. I think it's like Abyssia... Um, I forget. There's only six nations, I think, that have it. I can't click on Mod Inspector. I don't know what's going on here. But, um, yeah, it's not letting me click on it. So I can't, I can't hover it over, hover it. Oh, here it says, oh, Kalums. The Kalums and the Ragas. Okay. Yeah, your Kalums don't have fire resistance, though. So you can't do this behind their troops. But, you know, it could be a strong pretender. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, it deserves S tier. It, it definitely, especially on, like, a, it can definitely help you win first wars it's highly mobile because it flies uh it's just really really good um we'll put them up here definitely mindless uh the only thing that's it, it can kind of super combatant too the only challenges with this guy super combatanting are it doesn't have the best buff paths with death and fire until like the late mid game once you have soul vortex and phoenix pyre it can kind of do it again but you kind of don't, you know, when you do Soul Vortex Phoenix Pyre, you tend to really mess up your god. Like, you're going to get a ton of afflictions. And it's like, do you really want to do that on your god? I don't. 
so there's an argument for making him maybe like the best of the mindless expanders. I think it depends, you know? It depends. But, I mean, maybe he is the best of the mindless. He, you really don't want to use him to super combatant armies. He just doesn't have the best paths for it. But, I don't know. I think he could be either. We'll leave him down here for the moment. We might move him up to S if, if A becomes overcrowded. Next up, we have one of the dragons. So we're actually going to do all the Jomanese dragons here at the same time. We'll go ahead and pull them all up here. There's three of them. There's a blue, a white, and a turquoise. So we'll go ahead and pull them up here. Jomen is kind of the classic nation that gets them, but I believe like Shinuyama can probably get them. I think all the Japanese themed nations can get them. So the Azure Dragon of the East. This gets a, an item that gives a temporary nature gem. This gets one that gives a temporary pearl. And they also give a bonus magic path. And then this gives one that gives a temporary water. So they're very magical dragons, but they lack the hit point pool. And I think they're one lower protection than the other dragons. So they tend to not be as killy. And I think they have maybe a little lower strength than other combat stats. But they have the, the dragon gas attack. I think it's also a little bit weaker. Because I think it scales off strength for most of these. And I think they have less strength. I, we'll have to pull it up and check. But they're pretty cool. They're cheaper than the other dragons too. The other dragons are like 60 points. 260, these are 200. So they're, they're a little bit more value. And they're kind of more magical. Why is this guy showing water 3? Oh, this guy is... That's because the water one, I think, is only water. Yeah, this guy is water two, and then it gets the bonus one. These guys are... Air and Astral. But I believe these might have a minus one in, in both of their magic paths or something. This guy doesn't. Yeah. So anyway, they're pretty magical. Their human form, I think, is a Ryujin, too, which is pretty cool. Oh, no, it's a Celestial Bureaucrat. Yeah, okay. Um, so, how do they do? They can expand, but not super well. They can all expand. Do you need a Bless? Not really. Especially once... So, like, for this guy, he's Nature and Astral, right? Once you get, like, Enchantment 2, Alteration 3, where they have Personal Region and Body Ethereal, it's, like, no problem. Right, this guy's kind of a monster, and he can magic face, so this guy's really cool. Same thing with the air one, air and astral. You know, these guys can expand fine once they get alt. Th this one, you just rush alt three, and you get mist form at alt two, and then you get body ethereal at alt three. But yeah, it it'll expand fine. The thing is, is they're not quite tanky enough without any spells to take on hard provinces, but these guys can take on easy provinces. Um, pretty well. So we're going to probably put them here and they can work well. They're definitely not mindless, right? This is not a pretender. You just run into whatever province and you don't think about it, right? Uh, you want to save your harder provinces for once you have some research. They are flying and highly mobile, so you can get to a lot of places and they're pretty good magic users. So they have that going for them. Yeah. And they can, the thing is, is, the other way to kind of look at expansion pretenders is the difference between being able to take a province and being able to take the hard provinces is a big deal. Because a lot of times if you're not taking the hard provinces, then you have to send your army to take them. And your army might, you know, take losses and get, you know, or even lose. So having a pretender that can take strong provinces is pretty valuable. But, you know, with a lot of these pretenders, they're not going to be able to take hard provinces at the beginning but a lot of them are going to be able to take them once you get two or three in a research. So these are definitely in that camp. As to the order within them, I value magic phase a lot, right? So somebody was telling me, one second. Yeah, so in terms of, you know, which one's the best, I feel like the breath attack, the, the lightning one has a better breath attack than the, the poison gas one. And then both of these can magic phase. So I think they're better than the water one, but the water one's a higher mage in the dragon form so if you want to do like big water evocations or something in combat you know this could be your man but yeah i think and there's really good high level water things like like huge liquefy spam could be pretty cool but yeah 
No, I, I think this is probably an okay order for them. Next up, we have a, a, a tricky one. We have the Great Tortoise. The Black Tortoise of the North. So, super high protection, and yeah, it doesn't really have a ton else. It's got Strength of the Winter, so it's weaker in the summer, which actually kind of sucks because you start expansion in the summer. But I think that hopefully the penalty is less... I think they changed it so that you don't get quite as big of a malice as you do get a bonus. Yeah, this guy... So it's very, 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 like, defense-oriented. Obviously, it's a turtle, right? It has a single attack, and it doesn't have fear or anything. So it's like, the question is, how do you get the enemy to go away? If you don't have a way to do that, then you're going to be sitting there just letting them punch you for, like, 60 rounds. You're going to get afflicted from all the chip damage. So, like, what do you do? I think the best thing you could do is get Breath of Winter pretty quickly or take a Chillara Bless. We'll just do a quick expansion with it because I, I kind of don't know. We'll just put basically no Bless on it. I just want to see if it can ex how well it expands without anything. We're going to send it over here at this province, which is Militia, Light Infantry, and Heavy Infantry. And here's how the battle goes. I forgot to script him. Yeah, this is the problem. It doesn't have a way to make the enemy go away. And it finally rolled a Bleeding Affliction, now it's going to die. Yeah. So that's what I suspected to be the problem, but sometimes it's good to actually test these things so I don't feed you guys a bunch of misinformation. Um, so yeah, that's the problem. Now, would it have worked? If we took a Chill or a Bless, it would work. So I think if you want to take a Chill or a Bless, this guy's possibly your man, because it, it will, you know, especially if you're expanding in cold... It'll freeze everything around it. And then once it's frozen, it'll just take its time and bite their heads off one at a time. So, um, you know, that's potentially a thing. You could also just wait until you have chill, you know, breath of winter and cast that, you know, and then maybe with an ethereal bless, it would be strong enough that it could, you know, it's going to take fewer afflictions. But still, you know, you roll a bleeding thing, you're in trouble. So you really don't want these battles dragging out super long. So where are we going to rank it? Sadly, I think it's going to be in the requires a bless category, and it's probably towards the back of it. Yeah. Next up, we have an interesting one, a carrion dragon. So I'll go ahead and show you this on Asphodel. All right. So the carrion dragon, it's got one death, one nature. And it loses, I think, one or two pats. So I can't remember in, in this form. It's at least one, but it might be two in the dragon form. But you... Okay. Well, so you can take reforming flesh and it becomes pretty good it's got a huge hit point pool it can regenerate with that has recuperation built in which is nice it shape changes into a carry-on lord which is sick this guy's actually like a super combatant chassis a weaker super combatant chassis but a super combatant chassis the sad thing is it's inanimate so it can't do like personal regen and uh, yeah. Okay, so that's basically... So if you look at it, like, what kind of... You could get reforming flesh. Uh, a lot of the nature ones, I'm not really sure what you would take here. Uh, oh, we need to look at its protection, too. Its protection's 11, which is kind of a weak point. And it doesn't have a breath attack like most of the dragons do. You're really just going to be planning on killing things and routing them with fear. The thing is, with the recuperation, you don't care about the afflictions. And with 200 hit points and reforming flesh you're going to be able to tank a good bit. I don't know... I don't think you would ever want to get this guy without reforming flesh, but I also don't know if it would work without reforming flesh. It takes too much damage. And these sleep vines are going to fatigue things, but they're not going to kill them. So... Or not quickly, anyway. So... I think where this guy stands is you actually kind of need a bless, but it's probably the best of the pretender chassis that need a bless. Now, I'm sure you could expand with this guy, where you get lucky on a fear check, it could expand, but I think it's too risky without having a reforming flesh bless. It doesn't... Also, the paths it gets aren't, like, crazy magic phase paths. You know, like, you're not able to magic phase super... Like, you could do fairy trod or stygian paths or something. But, you know, in general, it's not really magic phase paths. So it's not going to... Even though it has a super combatant form, with the carry on lord, it's not necessarily, like, a great one. And new magic path cost is expensive, so like you could pick up air and be able to magic phase, but 
even then you're having to do it in your other format. I don't know. It it would be tricky. Where do I rate this guy? I think the Carry On Dragon is probably the top end of Requires a Bless. It's really good. It's probably not going to like win the game for you. Like It doesn't have the same options in the late game, even though this guy technically requires a bless, I think. We put him up there because just the whole package is so good. This guy, the whole package isn't that good, right? It's okay. It definitely can expand. It can be a great option as an efficient expander if you want a reforming flesh bless, but it's not bringing much else to the table. Next up, we have the Celestial Griffin. Let's see if we can find them. So the Celestial Griffin is in a class of pretenders that we call the Sphinx class. There's a few of them. Here's the Sphinx. But basically, they have this weird thing. Well, this came up kind of what we were talking about in the beta some, but it's a, it's a weird pretender class, okay? It doesn't have high enough protection to tank. It doesn't have, like, the crazy amount of hit points, like 200 or something, like some of the big, thick monsters do. And it has fear, which is nice, So it ha and it's very killy. It has ways to make the enemy go away, but it just can't tank. And you'd be like, oh, we'll fly an attack rear. Gentlemen, let me tell you, if you try to do that for like six or eight turns, there's a very good chance your, your god dies. So it, can this guy expand? Here's what it can do. It can expand once you get Alteration 2 from Mist Form. That's basically it. And even then, it's not super safe, right? Like you can still get a Bleeding Affliction or something like that. You could also do Shockwave expansion with this guy. So you could do like, it might be you could go Evo 2 for Shockwave or like Alt 2 Evo 2 and expand. And again, these are things that I think would be really interesting. This is the perfect example of a pretender that would be really interesting if you could actually assign your research at the start. If you could pick, like instead of the, the magic points you get being randomly distributed, you could actually distribute it yourself. It would open up a lot of these completely trash pretenders right now. Like the, you, the thing is, like, okay, it, Lucid, you're saying this is trash, but you just have to wait to Alt 2 and Evo 2, and then it expands fine? Like, how is that trash? You know, what if you just wanted a high, like a cheap expander, because this guy's pretty cheap, that had air paths? Wouldn't that be good for that? The thing is, one of the main jobs of an expander is to help you clear out your cap circle early. And this guy does not do it well. Like, yeah, he could go with your army and help your army out. But it's not going to, like in a competitive multiplayer game, it's not going to translate to like more provinces at the end of the first year, most likely. Maybe you have like one or two extra. And that's not usually what you're paying for. Like you want to get your cap circle cleared so you get more resources to get more troops. Like that's the whole reason you get an awake expander. Anyway, here's my opinion. But I think this guy's pretty trash. If research changed, though, and you could get Alt 2, Evo 2 at the start by picking Magic 3 on this guy, I think it would actually be really cool. And it might be good. He might be, like, meta, even. Like, that's how much little changes can make. So can he expand with the Bless? That's the other thing I didn't mention. There's no Air Blesses that are going to let this guy expand. You know, it's not like there's a Fog, like a Mist Form Bless he could pick up. It's just get ready to get wrecked. <laughs> You know, there's, there's there's no options for him. The next up we have is oh god, what's this guy called? Well, hopefully he's here. It's oh god, it's not. Okay, I found it. Celestial Lion, and basically the same thing, but with fire and astral. Is this in the same category? Okay, there's a caveat here. This guy has same thing has a way to make the enemy go away, but he has different paths: fire and astral. Now, what is different? Astral has access to the Body Ethereal Bless. So if you take this guy and you're willing to just drop some points, if you're willing to drop some dollar bills on, like, uh, Body Ethereal as a Bless, this guy could expand just fine. Let's see, require eight? So I can actually get in here. Yeah, I mean, this is legal. So... Uh, yeah, this guy could expand fine. And it's not here, it's not breaking the bank. We're not destroying our scales. So this is an option. You could take it and he will expand. Because he'll have effectively like 500 something hit points. Maybe 600 hit points. Um, so yeah, with that and fear and three attacks, it'll destroy things. And then once you get, you know, astral shield and fire shield, then it becomes really good. 
So is it the same category as the other sphinxes? No. With a bless, it can work. I think with a bless, it's going to expand better than the turtle, actually. And it's more mobile and everything like that. So I think it's actually an improvement, but it does require a very expensive bless. And if you don't have that bless, then it's D, D tier. Okay, so this is... It's in C tier, but the bless it requires is basically one thing, and it's ethereal. Next up, we have the ram's headed something. What is it called? Please tell me you're here. Oh gosh, it's not. Okay, we have found them. They were on Abyssia. So, uh, the the cryo sphinx. This one's similar. Basically, it's a sphinx chassis. It's got air in nature, and doesn't have fear. So that's a pretty big malice. I think the other guy did have fear. The thing is, is you're like, okay, what blesses could you take where this guy could expand? And the answer is basically none. You could take regen. It's not going to work with 12, 12 protection. You're still going to die. Doesn't have fear, so the enemy's going to go away even slower. Once you get mist form, personal regen, this guy could work, but then you're wasting the most important turns of expansion. I think this guy's pretty bad. I mean, once it, the upside is... You know, it could be fun to have like an air five, nature five, thick caster. You know, it could potentially magic phase and attack. Anyway, there's good things this guy could maybe do in the mid game a little bit. But I think it's mostly just kind of trash. So we're going to put this guy down here. I would say, is it better or worse than the celestial griffin? The celestial griffin has fear. That's also a bit higher, but I think I would rather have nature access, right? Being able to do personal regen would be a major bonus. So I think it's probably better than the Celestial Griffin. Next up, we have a really cool one, the Demiurge. Let's see if we can get that on Abyssia. We don't, but I have found it on Early Age Air More. So the Demiurge is really interesting. It's got uh, 14 protection, 150 hit points, built-in regen, so that's 15 hit points a turn, and built-in all. Uh, but only has one attack and does not have uh, any kind of fear. So it does not have a good way to get the enemy to go away, but it can have pretty good protection. Like, or it's pretty defensive. So you basically, the main problem you have to solve on this one is to get the enemy to go away. And I think all you really need to make this chassis work is Dread, which is the glamour-based fear. So if you want to get Dread, this is a decent chassis to get it because it'll be able to expand pretty well with it in your Dominion. Without it, though, it's going to die horribly. And if you wanted to be like the perfect bless to make this guy like an actual good expander would be Hard Skin and Dread. We haven't really talked too much. We haven't had a lot of Earth Pretenders yet, so it's probably good to just refresh everybody's memory. It used to be you got a bonus protection for every Earth Path you took in Dominions 5. That's changed now, where if you get Earth 3, you get 3. But if you get Earth 4, you get no more. And if you get Earth 2, you get none. So it's like Earth 3 is kind of a magic cutoff. But if you get Hard Skin, you're going to have at least Earth 3 always. So you're going to basically get 5 and then the additional 3 you get from the Earth Paths. So it's going to be effectively a bonus 8 protection, which will jump this guy up to 22 natural protection which is very thick. So this guy with hard skin and dread would be a, an absolute menace, but you can see it costs a good number of scales. You have to kind of mess up your, your thing. It's four scales it costs. So uh, can't be good. If this is the bless you want, this is a pretty strong chassis because once you start stacking up the fact that now it's a 22 protection guy and it's got all and it's got built-in regen, it's pretty good. But, you know, it doesn't have... It doesn't have magic phase, I don't think... I'm not sure how you would use this guy. I'm also not super, like, I'm not going to pretend I'm really an expert on glamour yet. <laughs> so I'm not sure what being a high glamour mage would mean. I mean, I know there's good glamour spells for sure, but I know you can do like invisibility and stuff. That wouldn't be very good on this chassis, I don't think. But yeah, anyway, it's cool. This is going to be requires a bless. It only needs a dread. I think this is like middle of the pack for requires a bless. So, um, Probably better than this. I don't know. That guy has magic phase and can do air and astral stuff. It's probably a little probably a little worse than this guy. The only way he might be better is this guy could potentially be tankier. If you just want to like route an enemy army and you just like put this guy up, especially if you have somebody else to throw buffs on him, 
you know, having the built-in all built-in regen, maybe you have another guy to cast regen on him. He could be better, but I do feel like this guy scales harder. So we're going to put him back here, but this guy's pretty tanky with the right bless. He will be able to expand pretty well. Next up, we have the demon macaw and this one's interesting. All right. The demon macaw. It is a big flying demonic bird, <laughs> except it's not actually demonic. It's kind of funny. It's the demon macaw, but it's not a demon. But it doesn't have a ton of hit points. doesn't have a lot of protection. It does have all. And, er, yeah, that's it. <laughs> There's not much else. This guy could expand maybe, because it may be with an ethereal bless and with fire shield. Because it doesn't also have a good way to make the enemy go away, right? This one you would base... <laughs> it's going to be tough. This one's going to be the bottom of Requires a Bless. It has decent paths. Like, if you wanted... If you were like, oh, we're going to do... A Ethereal Fire, fire Shield Bless. You just really want to do it. This is... We actually had a Bless like this in Your Dreams, My Memes, or something like that. Um, So, you know, if that's something you wanted... I think we've got bonus bless points here with Micklin, so we can actually afford it. But if that's something you wanted to do, this would actually be a chassis that you could kind of make it work. The problem is there's nothing really anything to research because these are also the spells you would research. You know, you'd want alt for body ethereal and you'd want enchantment for... So, you know, <laughs> these are the buffs that would cast on itself in combat too. You're just basically getting those earlier so it could actually expand. The thing is, even with that, it's not going to be amazing. You know, too many... Like, if you get some bad rolls and things get through Ethereal at all, you're dead. You know, you can cast Twist Fate to kind of help with that. But it's... This is a... I think this would be able to expand, though. You know, you're going to have to trash your scales. But you can afford it. So, yeah, technically can expand. But I think this one's going to go at the bottom of the pack for requires a bless. I think the turtle is definitely going to expand better than the upside is if you take anything with an ethereal bless means you're taking high astral on your god, which automatically means there's, you know, it's going to scale better into the late game than probably like a tortoise. But don't love it. <laughs> okay, croc dog. Oh boy. Everybody loves croc dog. If you pick croc dog, you get style points. So this is a really cool pretender. It's got this attack that will destroy your soul. <laughs> How about that? It's, it's not enough that you die, you have soul death, right? So if it kills you, it will... There's no, like, MR check or anything, right? You're going to get soul slayed. So the only way to dodge this is to not get hit. So you can still, like, super combatant or thug kill this guy. You just have to go in with really high attack. I mean, a uh, defense skill, right? And if you have high defense, you're fine. Yeah, or you could be mindless like a golem or something. But yeah, this guy's cool as a super combatant killer. The problem is he can't magic phase move. And so you'd have to like be in the same province as a super combatant. It just, it doesn't really happen, but that's his main thing. He can't expand well though. That's the other thing. So in some ways, this is sadly just flavor unless you choose to get a magic phase path on him, which is expensive. But he expands well, right? Like you could just pick him and just go for something like, okay, I want to have like a high... You know, we're just going to do like a hard skin bless. He does need a bless though, right? Uh, he has fear, but he doesn't have regen or anything like that. Um, so, uh, what is it? 15 protection is not enough. So you basically have to have a hard skin bless. Y'all are going to notice some themes as we start going through all the pretenders, okay? You basically have to have a hard skin bre uh, bless, and then you could pick whatever else you want, you know? Um... Earth 6, yeah. I mean, you could just do this if you want. For, like, a pretty budget expander, he's going to do fine. I don't think it's also a terribly expensive chassis. Yeah, 150 is not that bad on Satis. So, you know, it's fine. If this is the Bless you want and you want an expander. But, yeah. I, I would put it middle of the pack for Acquires a Bless. Better or worse than the Demiurge? I would say they're, like, the same. It's going to expand... I don't know. It's so hard to, to evaluate these two because it's not like you can compare them directly. The reason this guy's better is because it's going to be better in the mid game and late game than this guy because it can magic phase around and things like that. I'm fine putting this guy here. 
But if you want like a cheap expander, this guy's going to be way cheaper than the Celestial, or what is this? I forget what he's called. Celestial Lion, I think. Oh boy. All right. First of the Corpse Eaters. Here we go. We got the Dog of the Underworld, I believe is what they're called. And we'll go ahead and just pre-station him here. Do we have access to this garbage pretender? This guy is a pretender. One second. Okay, so we've got the Dog of the Underworld. All right. Bad protection, not great hit points yet. <laughs> it does get more. Death and Glamour, so it's kind of cool. It's been changed. It gets Curse Bestowers. So anybody that attacks, it gets cursed. That's a kind of cool thing. Dark Power 3, kind of cool. If you're Especially in the cave layer now, you get that, you know, you could consistently get that stat boost. But, okay, it has a good fear, but it only has one attack, right? So it has kind of a way to make the enemy go away, but you're really crutching on the fear. Yeah. The problem is Corpse and Eater got nerfed for Pretenders. Like, it used to be you would, you know, this guy eats 20 corpses a turn, gets 20 permanent hit points a turn, like max hit points. But now you can raise it at most to 150. So there's a cap on it, which puts it at like the Great Kraken level after like you hold its hand for the whole time, getting those corpses up. Yeah, th this is an interesting thing for like Andromania, these caps. Or for whatever the dog eating, they you know, the, the corpse eating nations are, but ugh, it's horrible. It's a horrible, unneeded nerf for an already very questionable pretender in Dominions 5. Now, this guy's complete garbage now, right? And furthermore, there's not even a bless you could take on this guy to expand. Glamour can't do it. Yeah, it's not happening. Basically, with Glamour, you can get things that lower the person's attack who's attacking you, or you can get fear. Those are kind of the expansion blesses. And with death, you can basically get fear or Stygian skin. None of those things are going to help here, right? So there's nothing you can get for Bless. This guy's like the long-term payoff for which you might get this guy, like the Corpse Eater thing, which the main reason you would get him is trash now on gods. Yeah, this guy's maybe the worst pretender in the game at the moment. We'll just put him back here. Okay, next up, with a, a bright change of, of scenery, I guess you could call it, we have the Draco Lich. The Draco Lich is sick. I'm going to actually put it up here in S tier. We'll pre-position it. Let's see if we have a Draco Lich here we can look at. It. It's a very common pretender. There's a good chance whatever nation you want to play, you could play with the Draco Lich. Now, why is this pretender sick as hell? Oh, it turns into a Master Lich. I thought it turned into a Bog Mummy. One second. Okay, so this is interesting. I'm on Pyrene, and Pyrene has a Draco Lich. I didn't know this, which turns into a Master Lich. And nations like Nippleheim have one that turns into a bog mummy. I think it's also like Jotunheim. There's a few other ones, maybe Vettiheim. But these guys, they turn into a bog mummy. Now, bog mummies are super combatants. They're, a bog mummy is basically this, right? So this could be a super combatant easily. It's really good. So this is basically what it would turn into. Otherwise, it's going to turn into a master lich, which is this, which still could, you know, super combatant or thug. It's way better to turn into this than to turn into like one of these guys. So that's kind of interesting. What, I'm gonna actually, one second. Yeah, I was wondering if it turned, if it got immortality. Turns out it doesn't. It just opened up a, a test game with it. But yeah, here you can see uh, the god and it changes back and forth into a, a Dracolich. That's pretty cool. This actually, so the idea is that this guy actually is a super combatant. Right, it. I didn't actually notice it got uh, built-in invulnerability. Or maybe that comes with the chassis. But yeah, especially if you were to take like air two uh, on your mage, you could get, or you could empower this guy in air as the game goes on. But yeah, it can, it could potentially like super combatant. I guess the nations you're going to be getting them on, like Niflheim. You know, it's less valuable. Um, but you know, this guy could also do. Wind of Death spam or things like that if you empower an air or or take air in your as part of your pretender. So yeah, it's pretty sick. It, the, the dragon form also expands really well. It's got this plague breath, which does a lot of fear. It tends to just kind of instantly route things. And the bless you tend to take with this is reforming flesh. But you know, you could take other things. But yeah, it expands super well. Has a cool human form that it turns into. This is a much better form, obviously, than the like the, the dinky human pretender, like rainbow mages. 
So that's a pretty big bonus. And even on the, even if you have the kind that turns into a master lich, this is still pretty useful. Like you can still definitely magic phase drop on things if you pick up a magic path. Okay, do I really think it's S tier? For I, th I think when I was looking at it before, I thought they all got the bog mummy, but knowing that some of them get the, the lich, probably not. But it is really sick to be able to turn into a lich. You're not really even paying much more. I mean, the thing you're losing is you're losing, if we go to the, you're not getting immortality, right? I don't really value immortality a ton. I don't think it even is going to keep you holding up globals anymore. Uh, I think they might have changed that, but that might be misinformation. Um, so yeah, I think if you die with uh, like a global, immortality won't save it. Does it save it here? Yeah, but it does not work on other planes. That's an interesting interaction. Yeah, so Master Lich, pretty cool you know, get some mortality, but otherwise, you know, you're paying more for the, the Master Lich than you're paying for a Draco Lich. And I guess you get one more Magic Path, which is definitely has some value, but I don't know. Having this guy who can expand seems really sick. Um, Yeah, okay, so where do we place it? I think Draco Lich goes here, probably top of the mind list. Um, but arguably, if you took um like an Air Path on it, and especially if you're one of the... Here are the nations that get it. I'll hover over it. Uh, Muswellheim, Niflheim, Jotunheim, Utgard, and Vettiheim. Right, if you took it on one of them, you, you, you know, the Bog Mummy is a super combatant chassis. So then it may be S tier. We're going to leave it down here. Top of the mindless. Next up, we have all the dragons. Now, we've already covered the first of the dragons, and we're running out of time. This will probably be where we end the video. We're going to cover all of them out through here, including the Dracon. Who gets the Dracon? Let's see. Okay, so we've got a lot of them here on this page. So we'll look at them here. We've got the... Well, we'll start with the, the normal ones. We'll look at the Dracon last. But so they have, you know, like I mentioned, they're buff. They have magic attacks now. They shape change into a, like a rainbow mage, which is nice because they can... It's easier to cast spells and things often in those forms. If they get hit in those forms and like where they would have died, they'll turn into a dragon. So, you know, you don't have to risk that. The other thing that's really cool about shape changers in general, and it, like even if you're going to use like the Draco Lich or something, and you want to use them in their human form, if they get killed in the human form, they don't lose their items. Their items will go into like a held slot. It'll come over here. It'll be like grayed out. And it's basically going to be waiting for when they change forms. The items are still going to be there. So that's actually really cool. It's going to make these shape-changing dudes a lot better, and that includes all the dragons. So you could use your guy, like your mage, equipped in combat, and if they, you know, get killed, then they turn into a dragon. So that's like another pretty major buff, because you could put on a bunch of spellcasting gear. A lot of times you wouldn't want to do that, because, you know, if it's a dangerous situation, you expect your god might get killed, you don't want to lose those items. Well, now he's going to keep them. They won't be active unless they're these items. Right. And then it'll, you know, it'll be in the dragon form and maybe it'll fly away or run away or win the fight or something. And then you'll get to keep the items. So that's a pretty big buff to the dragon forms. All the dragon forms can expand. Or, I mean, all the dragons can expand, right? The, the breath, these guys are so easy. Do not put them on hold attack rear or something like that unless you really know what you're doing. The default expansion script should just be like arrow, arrow shield or like maybe one spell and then fire closest. It's not complicated. Now, this does a, a tremendous amount of damage. Like it shoots out, I don't know exactly how it works. It shoots out a ton of things and each one that hits has, has, has chaining three. I think it, the last time I tested it, I think it was, it shot out like seven. Seven of these have chaining three. So it's potentially like 21 hits. It kills things pretty quickly. It can hit friendlies too though. So you have to be careful. Yeah, as to which one's better, there's not really a real order. There are some interesting things, right? So like this is nine fatigue. The earth one is really interesting. It has a low seven fatigue beam and it does acid damage, which you can't have resistance for. The, the problem with that is it's gonna be hard to find a front line that will be able to withstand the dragon bile. But if you do like summon earth power and maybe you take a reinvigoration bless, this guy can do dragon bile all day long. So that's like a really cool thing. That might put this guy kind of towards the front. So it, this guy's like better, much better as a solo operator, but he doesn't really work in armies very well. 
or at least using the dragon breath. So pretty interesting. You know, the, the air one can magic phase. That's no small thing. The nature one is probably the best early game for like, once you get enchantment two, you can take some pretty tough provinces. The water one, eh. The, the dra this is actually a really good cloud effect. This will mess things up. So this is really, really strong for turn one expansion, like for the very beginning of the game. And so is the fire one. Both these do like very fast damage. I think the fire one might be the most killy. I don't think this guy leaves behind. Oh, no, it does leave a lingering cloud as well. Does the dragon one, does this one leave a, yeah, it, it does too. Yeah, these are both really strong. I think the fire one's probably better because it clears out things. Like this, this is nine armor negating damage, but I think this 18 armor piercing damage is going to do a lot better against the indies. They're both going to leave behind powerful heat effects. So we'll go ahead and rank the dragons here. These are the top end of can work well. They're not quite mindless, I don't think. We're going to go ahead and put the water one right behind it because this is just how well they expand at the beginning. You know, the air one potentially could be better because like in the once you have wrathful skies up, this guy's pretty cool. Um, you know, you can magic phase on things in wrathful skies if you want. The nature one, it, I, it's really going to be hard for me to rank them because it just depends on what you want. The earth one is also really cool. We might put it at the front because it's also going to blow up indies. But it really depends what you want. The problem with the Earth one is it doesn't play well with armies. And you're not really with any of these going to super combat an armies terribly, like enemy armies terribly easily. So it probably actually doesn't, I don't know, maybe we'll put it here. There's not really an, it, this matters 100% on all the circumstances. I can't give you like a an objective ranking that you're so desperately craving. The things that tend to kill these are like you run into a bunch of heavy cab or barbs if you get unlucky with the breath rolls. Like how like sometimes they miss on their breath or if they get swarmed by barbs or heavy cab and they didn't do well on the breath rolls they can die they're not that tanky they really do rely on their breath a lot so that's kind of the other thing the other nice thing about the earth one why it's a good solo operator is iron skin has also been buffed so if you have high base natural protection it'll add five to it whereas before it was only three so this guy casts iron skin on himself he's going to get up to 18 plus and assuming he's, he's at least Earth 3, it's going to be 18 plus 8 again. And if you have hard skin, it would actually be 18 plus 13, which would be a lot, 31. Anyway, so this guy, maybe he's the best of the dragons. I think it just depends. I can sit here all day and move them back and forth. But these are very strong expanders. Are they better than these Jominis? Well, they're more expensive, and they're better at expanding in general. They tend to not be able to go underwater while the Jominese ones can. So that's another use case for the Jominese ones, I believe. And then next up, we have the Dracon. And the Dracon is a big, thick boy. It cannot fly unlike a Z. We might have to bump a Z up. The thing is, the Dracon actually has... So it's very similar to, the, to a Z. It's got four me magic melee attacks. And then a tail sweep, which is area of effect but mundane. And then Dragon Gas, which is a, a strong cloud effect. So, yeah, th this guy tears up. You really, you, this is one of the few expanders who you can blind expand with. Definitely Mindless would be top of Mindless. But I think this one also, especially if you take like a Region Bless, it's got enough hit points and you like, you can like do just basically HP tank things where you are just going to Region so much they can't kill you. I don't know. This guy can be really, really hard to kill. And it's very killing in armies, especially if you take cold resistance as part of your blast. And you have like sacreds with this guy blasting out dragon gla uh, gas everywhere. Anyway, and you know, it can do summon earth power. So it's going to have more dragon gas than before. So there's just a lot of things that make this guy really scary. He is definitely mindless. I think we're going to move both of these guys up here. They're both really good. I think this guy's better because I just feel like these are better super combatant paths than this guy, but this guy can fly, which is a pretty major upgrade. We're going to go ahead and move these guys up here, I think. Yeah. Uh, one thing these both lack, though, is... what does it? Can a Z do it? Let me check. I don't believe they can turn into... 
I know the Dracon can't. I don't think a Z can. Yeah, neither of these ha oh, this guy can turn into a Great Warlock. Can the Dracon? But yeah, the Dracon can't change. Huh. So that's interesting. So a Z can and the Dracon can't. Maybe that's a case for a Z to be a little higher than the Dracon. I do like the ability to shape change. That's going to make it a lot easier to reach certain globals or be a better mage in combat. And because you don't lose your gear, you can just be a mage. And then at some point you turn into a dragon and go ham if people punch you. So yeah, that's pretty cool. Okay. And some of these dragons might actually be mindless. Like the earth one, if you take a, if you take a earth, like a hard skin bless, I'm pretty sure he becomes mindless. I don't think there's anything that's going to mess with him. And then the nature one, if you take person like a region bless, it's probably going to become mindless as well. So some of these with the right bless could become mindless. And I guess that's kind of how we're pricing this guy. Maybe we move some of these up. Yeah, I think, you know, the same logic I had, if you take the Dracula, you're almost always going reforming flesh. I think with this guy, if you take this guy, you're almost always going to be going, this isn't really true, but... A lot of time you're going to be going hard skin or you're going to be going reinvigoration. And I think either of those make this guy really, really good. The fire one, you know, the thing, a lot of times you're worried about like barbs or heavy cav. If you take fire shield as a bless, this guy would be really good. Nature with regen might be able to go up there. But I think these two are probably the most mindless. Just fear routes everything so efficiently. Yeah. And then with the with hard skin, this guy really does become a monster. And then with reinvigoration it as well, but really with hard skin, it's definitely mindless. Nature, yeah, with region, this guy is still not mindless. You still have to be careful about running him in, into barbs. Okay, I think we're gonna stick with this for now. You know it's imperfect, but a lot of this is the process, it's the journey. In order to give you a rough, even if I don't have things in the precise place where that maybe they ultimately should be. Um you know, we've kind of figured our way to, to some sort of end. But we've done about half of them, which is pretty good for the first one. So I think we're going to call it here. And yeah, the we're going to start off with the Earth Snake next time, which will be pretty exciting. We've got some fun ones to go through. So leave your comments in the video. Let me know which your favorite are that we covered today. I'm sure you don't agree with some of the things I've said, but hopefully you've enjoyed the process nonetheless. We'll come back probably in a couple days, and do the rest of these. So stay tuned. Cheers.